what should you learn to play on? Obviously you can spend a little bit of money, you can spend a lot of money. There's real acoustic pianos and there's all kinds of keyboards and digital pianos you can get. I'm not gonna get too technical with all the specs and things. So I just wanna talk about some of the important features I think you should look for things to consider, things that you should know about to help you choose the right thing which will actually help you learn better. So you need to try and pick the right thing that's most suitable for you and some people are gonna have slightly different needs to others. So I'll touch upon these things throughout the video. The first thing is, do you need a real acoustic piano to learn to play? Well, that's the dream for a lot of us, but in reality, for a lot of us, it's just not possible to have one. So most of us do end up learning on a keyboard or digital piano, and that's absolutely fine. Just quickly, if you're not sure, there is a slight difference in the terms keyboard and digital piano. A digital piano is something that's specifically meant to emulate a real acoustic piano. So really it should have weighted keys, but they often get referred to as keyboards as well. Keyboard can also mean loads of other things like simps and electric pianos, but you wouldn't call those digital pianos. A lot of us won't have the space for a real acoustic piano, so a digital piano is often a lot more practical. You can get good enough quality and all the main features you need as a beginner at a much more affordable price compared to even some of the cheaper real acoustics. It's easier to practice quietly, you can put headphones in too. And you've also got the option of using other sounds like electric piano and organ. Although with more entry level keyboards, those sounds aren't always the best, but the cheaper ones are usually fine for getting going and practicing with. If you're looking to buy a real acoustic piano, I honestly recommend visiting your local piano or music shop to try things out for yourself. So the main question that people often ask is what size keyboard should you go for? A full size piano is 88 keys, but you can get a lot of keyboards and MIDI controllers and all that kind of stuff, uh, like 73, 76 keys, and then 61, 49. So again, it depends what you're doing. This one is actually only 73 keys, as you may have noticed, but if you're learning to play piano properly, I'm gonna recommend going for a full size 88 keys, because eventually when you're learning like proper piano repertoire and stuff, playing on your own, at some point the smaller size is just gonna limit what you can do. You can get away with 73 and 76 keys for a while. Going below that, you're gonna find that very limiting very soon, and you'll end up just needing to upgrade anyway down the road, so it's a bit of a false economy if you buy something smaller now, if you're looking to play piano properly. Although, if you're a producer and you're just looking to get some basic piano skills to help you program stuff in, you'll probably get away with a smaller keyboard. But it's up to you, it depends what space you've got, what kind of stuff you're doing. The other main thing to think about is weighted keys. So every brand of keyboard and every real piano for that matter is gonna feel a little bit different, but there's a few kind of broad categories. So there's keyboards with non-weighted keys that usually look like this. And some of them don't even have touch sensitivity, which means when you push the key harder, it's gonna sound louder. But then some of them do have it, which is obviously a bit better. Then we have keyboards with semi-weighted keys, which tend to look a little bit more like normal keys, but they don't quite feel the same. I actually have another Nord kind of like this one with semi-weighted keys, because I sometimes prefer that for some sounds like clav and organ. But then ideally, I think the most important feature you wanna look for is for a keyboard with fully weighted keys. So these are designed to mimic what a real piano feels like much more closely. They feel very different to non-weighted keys and they're optimal for developing technique properly. Getting your fingers used to the feel and touch of them and how you need to move to control the sound and the dynamics and things. So we wanna try and get as close to that authentic feel as we can and certain things just aren't quite the same when you haven't got weighted keys. When we're talking about more entry level keyboards and digital pianos, it is the ones with weighted keys that are a little bit more expensive. But for the reasons I've just mentioned, I do think they are worth the investment. If you want some specific suggestions, I'm gonna put some links down below in the description you can check out. There's a couple in there like the Roland's and the Yamaha's, which are my two favorite entry level keyboards. Quite a few of my students have those keyboards, so I've played on them a lot. The sound quality is really good for that price bracket and I think they feel really nice as well, particularly the Roland. You may hear the odd person say that it's a complete waste of time to practice on a keyboard that doesn't have weighted keys. The argument is that you end up wasting time relearning technique afterwards. That is true to some degree, but it's a bit extreme. It's more like you have to be prepared to spend some time adapting, adjusting, and learning a few technique things that you couldn't have without the weighted keys. There's still plenty of things that you will learn without weighted keys. You should go with the best thing that you can afford as if you you spent two years without a weighted keyboard then obviously you're going to learn a hell of a lot more than if you didn't have anything but if it just means saving up for a little bit longer remember it is ideal in the long run to get something with weighted keys it's still a reasonable amount of money to spend on one that doesn't have weighted keys anyway and you may end up spending more if you just have to upgrade a little way down the line 
So there is kind of a lowest price point where you'll start seeing keyboards with weighted keys. And around that price point, there's also keyboards without, but there you're spending the money on extra features, extra sounds, maybe onboard computer screens where you can program things. So I think the money is better spent on those features that are gonna help you learn to play better. When you do start spending more money than that, you do get a few extra little features, like some of the lower end keyboards, you have to like hold shift and push a key to change sounds and things and a bit more money and you'll get all the options on buttons and stuff like that. Some of them have Bluetooth and you can record yourself and all that kind of stuff. And then when you get to a much higher end, that's when you're starting to get even better actions and much more authentic, nicer sounds. But when you're just starting out, that high end isn't necessarily worth it. Those entry level keyboards are perfectly good enough to be learning on. The other thing for going for something for too cheap is the sound quality. Now I don't want to sound snobby, but it does honestly make a big difference. When you've got a keyboard that sounds really nice, or a certain level of quality at least, I think it's much more motivating to play when you're actually creating a nice sound with what you're doing. So I'm talking about the main piano sound. Like I said, if you want much higher quality, authentic replications of other electric pianos and organs and things like that, you're gonna be paying a lot more money. If you have it on board, that is, there's always the option of having samples on your computer and using a MIDI keyboard. I also think it's really important that people have a permanent setup they can just sit at, turn it on and start practicing straight away. If you have to faff around plugging things in, wiring stuff up, it can put you off getting started. So most entry level digital pianos or keyboards, um, they all have built in speakers. Actually, when you get to higher end stuff, they tend to be made more for professionals gigging and stuff, so you have to plug in an amp, like this doesn't have speakers. If you need a MIDI keyboard because you wanna be programming stuff on the computer, if you don't know, a MIDI keyboard is where the keyboard doesn't actually have sounds on it, it just kind of sends signals to the computer and the computer has the sounds in the software, it just kind of triggers them. Although some keyboards have both, so this one has its own sound and it has a MIDI output as well, I can do both of that. If you don't need it for that though, it's gonna be more faffy to set up. What you don't wanna do is, is have your keyboard on a desk. You wanna have a proper sturdy, stable stand anyway. So some of these keyboards come in with their own inbuilt stands or you can get portable stands and things. Again, choose what's right for you. If you're gonna to need to move your keyboard around, then you don't want one of those permanent ones. They do tend to be a bit more stable in general, which is really useful. You don't want a keyboard to be wobbling around. Although if you do get a decent cross brace stand, or one like this, and you have a level floor, or you set it up right, make sure that it's sturdy, then you shouldn't have too much of a problem. And lastly, when you do buy a keyboard, you sometimes get a free stool and a pedal with it. These may seem like a good deal, but the accessories they come with usually aren't the best. For example, the stools are often too small and narrow, and it's much better to get an adjustable stool. Because your sitting height plays a, an important role in your technique, and pedals that look like this are honestly pretty useless. A decent, proper sustain pedal that mimics like a real piano pedal, they're not that expensive and I've got a link below for the one that I always recommend to my students which is universal sometimes not all brands of pedals are compatible with other brands of keyboards I hope that was helpful please let me know in the comments if you have any questions about getting your first setup to learn piano on and please give the video a like as that really helps out the channel thanks for watching